Tribe, Book 2, Todd Mills Mystery, author R.D. Zimmerman, publisher, Scrib Pub, Minneapolis, Minnesota, narrator, Eric Ost. Chapter 9 Paul wasn't quite sure what to make of the situation. He stood in the deep snow just outside the kitchen window, and so far he hadn't been able to locate her. The woman who owned the house, perhaps she was upstairs resting or bathing. Perhaps this man, the one who was dancing and singing out there in the living room, had come over just to watch the baby for a bit. Or maybe he'd come over to watch the child while she went out. Wait, no, her car was in the garage, so she was here. Then again, maybe she had gone somewhere. Perhaps she was just at a neighbor's or someone had picked her up. The unknown made him uneasy. The snow was making him cold, unbelievably. He thought, looking at the light in the alley, the snow was coming down in thick sheets. This had to be a sign, he thought. Perhaps this was just like one of the great biblical sandstorms that had shielded God's worthy. Most certainly, and he was the chosen, here to rescue the infant Ripka. Praise Jehovah, for it was he who had brought this storm. He who was laying down this snow like a protective cloak. Yes, Paul would take the child in his arms and flee, and his tracks would soon be buried by the huge flakes. Filled with an inspired sense of purpose, by their fruits ye shall know them. He thought he moved back around the corner of the house. He looked down at a solitary basement window and realized just how he was going to accomplish this. His heavenly duty. No front or back door for him. No. He thought bending over and tapping in the glass. He just have to suck in his gut. Paul stroked his mustache with his right hand, looked around to be sure no one was watching. He backed around a bit and then with one swift movement he mule kicked a sharp hole in the storm window. Leaning over, he pulled aside as many shards as he could, then reached through and opened the latch. Tugging at the window, he felt it move. Excellent. His main concern had been that the windows were nailed shut, but they weren't, and once he had lifted the storm window, he punched another hole in the inner window. Paul peered into the dark basement, a washing machine, dryer, bicycle, a pile of laundry on the floor. On the edge of the window frame, he saw a small rectangular device had magnetic contact, part of a security system. He tensed quickly, pulled his pistol from his pocket, and waited. He forced himself to be patient, but nothing happened. No alarm crooned. Very good. So the system was inactivated. Now came the true test, he thought, as he lowered himself to the ground. Whether or not he could actually fit through this small window might prove to be his biggest problem of the night. A Gay Mysteries Audiobooks I think it is easy to hate a label, but a face humanizes the word. So this effort is twofold, to offer comfort to those like myself that your world didn't end because you don't fit into the view of acceptable society on both sides, and in hopes of helping those with family that are LGBTQ, that it doesn't mean we are aliens from the child they once knew. Reassure them so they can maybe be supportive at the same time, being true to their values.